Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the CIF. I'm your host, Richard Tiemann, and this is the Game of the Week preview for week number four of the 2021 CIF season. It should come as no surprise that this one belongs to the Sioux City Bandits and the Omaha Beef in part one of their three matchups this season in the iconic I-29 rivalry. I'll be joined by coaches Strobean and Jones to go over what this rivalry means to them and their teams and ultimately what they need to do to come out with the W. But first, I'd like to take a moment to inform you that in case you missed it, the Omaha Beef family and really the CIF family as a whole lost a member when Chris Orr, a.k.a. Moose, proud member of the Rump Roasters who we all know and love, passed away on Tuesday due to complications with COVID-19. CIF would like to send out thoughts and prayers and condolences to the Orr family, the Rump Roasters, the Beef Organization, and if you'd like to do so also, you're more than welcome to in any way that you can. It's not just a fan we lose when someone passes away unexpectedly, it's also a member of the CIF family. So once again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the Orr family, and we will always miss Moose. Now then, let's go ahead and get into week number four's Game of the Week preview with coaches Strobing and Jones. All right, fans, first up, as I mentioned, representing the away team for this first of three matchups, he is the head coach of the Sioux City Bandits, Irv Strobin. How you doing, coach? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I love Rivalry Week. It doesn't matter what sport, what level, there's just something different in the air, something about the game. And when you've gone a whole year without football of all sports, I think rivalries are probably going to be uh, a little bit more. How are you feeling going into this? Well, these games are always exciting. I can't say that I love rivalries because they're a stressful week. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's, I hate playing in Omaha because it's such a tough place to play. They got great fans down there. It's loud. It's crazy. Um, it's just not a great place to be away, the away team. So, um, and I think they would probably say the same thing had they uh, be coming to Sioux City this week. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's one of those weeks where, um, to me, this is why I still do the game, you know, still coach the, the game and I'm still involved with it. Um, you know, it kind of gets your juices flowing. I mean, I, I love to be competitive in everything I do. And I mean, I joke around, I don't let my kids win in card games that we play, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, it's games like this that really, um, you know, as a 44 year old guy, you know, I can't strap it up out there anymore. So, um, it's about the next closest thing, you know? So, um, we love having games like this with, uh, with great, uh, past opponents that we played for a long, long, long time. Absolutely. It is quite the storied rivalry, one of the longest in indoor football, uh, gone on about 20, 21 years now. And uh, the series has seen, you know, it go to one side for a while, the other side. And, uh, you know, coming into week four, you guys are coming off a fantastic victory at home over the Wichita Force. And congratulations to producing two players of the week, offense and defense, Fred Bruno and Ben Peister. So that's got to make you feel good going into a, a rivalry game. But, uh, you know, Omaha coming off a road loss to a tough opponent in Salina. So they're going to be fired up and ready to go for you guys. What have you communicated to your team going into this week after that win in, with, with Wichita? What Wednesday night, Monday night practice, we were finally able to actually get in, in practice with our turf arm. And I called the guys at the arena and we're practicing from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. And we literally played the speakers as loud as they would go the entire practice. And our quarterback and offensive coordinator, like, turn that down, turn that. I'm like, nope. I mean, that's the way it's going to be Saturday. It's going to be cowbells being rung right behind your ear while you're calling the play with the quarterback. So we did not take it easy on them at all. Uh, and we just tried to be as life lifelike and, and, and whatnot as, as the practice could be. We, um, I ran a play clock while this was going on. Um, we ran a game clock. We did situational drills. Um, so it was really a good time to actually be in the Tyson Event Center. Um, we don't necessarily have the luxury of getting to practice in there very much because we compete with the hockey team for, for time. So um, I'm just glad it was this week that we could get that stuff worked on um, and, and hopefully ironed out. You know, it's never going to be perfect, but, you know, as, as lifelike as possible, um, for those guys, we, we've communicated that it's going to be crazy atmosphere. It's going to be a distraction. It doesn't matter that they lost last week and we won. Don't throw those records out because it is a literal dogfight every time you play in Omaha. Um, and, and this is this is that game, like you said, it's that rivalry game. So, you know, you better strap it up Saturday and come ready to play. 
Yeah, and a fun fact for the fans uh, watching that aren't aware of just how long and how far back this this rivalry goes and its history, you're actually one of the few people that are not only coaching in the rivalry, but have also played. What does this rivalry mean to you? Well, I mean, it goes back to my, my days in the old uh, uh, NIFL, the UIF, all those days, you know, when, when I was a player last in, what, 2008 or nine or whatever it was. Um, it was a great rivalry then. It was always uh, um, the home team definitely had the advantage. And, and so we've got to overcome that. So, um, you know, our, our, our road record in Omaha, although I don't have it in front of me, um, going back, I think, you know, it can't be a, if we're over 500, it can't be much, you know, and that's, that's how, that's how I think you measure a good rivalry. You know, it's, you know, like you said earlier, sometimes it goes a little bit one-sided, but in the end it really evens out and, you know, they knocked us out of the playoffs in the home field advantage uh, situation a couple of years back and ended up going to the championship, you know, so uh, we remember things like that, you know, uh, we have great respect for Ricky and the rest of the organization, coach Marvin and, and all those guys down there, um, off the field, we shake hands and chop it up and, and have a good time together. But, you know, for those 60 minutes, it's it's a uh, it's a good time to, you know, just uh, focus on your team and, and 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 try to get that win. Yeah. And you guys will get the beef two more times this season, both at home, one so late in the season that it could have postseason implications. But how important is this one to you, not just because it's a rivalry, but because every game this season definitely counts and it's on the road? Well, I can tell you that every single game, doesn't matter when it is played, it has postseason implications between these two teams. Um, if history is any any type of um, gauge, it, it's going to have some some kind of a uh, whether it keeps keeps them at a lower seed and us at a higher seed, or vice versa. Uh, this is going to have some implications down the road, and that's my message to the guys: is that you can't wait till that last game to pick up the win or you can't, you can't win the last two games of this series and be good. We got to win the first two and then icing on the cake is the third one. So there's, there's, it's important from the jump. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, my last question for you going into this intense matchup this Saturday at the slaughterhouse in Omaha is what do you have to do to get the victory against coach Jones and his squad? Well, we got to tune out all that noise and all the, all the extra things that go on in a football game. You know, um, I have, we, we had way more penalties than I wanted last week uh, against Wichita. I felt we played well, but there was too many penalties and too many distractions. And you can't do that against good football teams in, in, in close games uh, and, and still get to win. So, um, you know, we've got to come ready to play focused. Um, it, it's a business trip down to Omaha, turn around and, and, and get back to work the following week. So, you know, they, they can't have any distractions. Bad things are going to happen in this game, and it's how, how do they respond to it. So uh, we, we've got to be able to overcome some of those bad things. Um, and not every gonna, everybody going to not play a perfect game for you. So um, we just got to have less mistakes than them. All right, mistake-free football sounds like a pretty easy game plan, but nothing's ever easy in the game of football. So, Coach, I do definitely appreciate your time. Thank you so much for hopping on the show for the Game of the Week preview, and we will see you this Saturday in Omaha, Nebraska at the Ralston Arena. I look forward to seeing you guys in person. All right, you have a good one, Coach. Thank you. All right, CIF fans, it's time now to check in with the man who will be representing the home team, head coach of the Omaha Beef, Marvin Jones. Coach, welcome. How you doing? Oh, great, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I love Rivalry Week. Um, coach Strobing says that he's kind of indifferent about them, but he's played and coached in them, and you're no stranger to rivalry games either at different football levels. So, first question is, what does this rivalry mean to you against the Sioux City Bandits? Well, I think that it's always been a pivotal rival between the two teams. Obviously, the last time we met, 2019, playoff implications. And, you know, so this is the type of game I expect. I mean, you know, we're so close. But yet we're far, we're far apart. And, you know, it's a big thing when it comes to the fans. I mean, you know, the I-29 rivalry. So, uh, you know, obviously when, you, when you're in the game, it's a little different. But the fans and everybody enjoy it and stuff like that. So it's, um, you know, I think it's a great thing, you know, to have. Yeah, and as uh, most of the fans know, there was a loss to the organization. Moose passed away because of COVID. What does that uh, do for you mentally as well as the team, you know, so close to a game day? 
Well, I think, you know, for the most part, I mean, from a player's perspective, they, you know, a lot of these guys are new, so they really haven't had opportunity to be around uh, Moose, but guys with us who know him, I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, it sucks, but, you know, we, you know, I think one of the, the greatest things we can do is go out and, and, and win a home game at home on the, you know, on the, on the same week. I think that'll be a good way to cap it off for old Moose. Yeah, absolutely. I think winning this one for him would be a perfect way for you guys to get into the win column. It was a tough loss against Salina on the road, and uh, I don't know if you guys are having short-term memory or using it as motivation, but clearly, you know, it's uh, 0-0, the record going into this weekend, but it's a season where every win and loss counts, so you guys will meet Sioux City three times. This will be the only one at home. Does that make this matchup any more significant to you as far as maybe starting the series off 1-0 and again? them i mean when you're playing a team three team times you know one one at home and two away i think it's pivotal that you can get one at home and then try to split with the other two um you know it's kind of a philosophy i mean you know that they're a good team and you just can't say oh well we're just gonna go out and beat them no i mean it's one of those games where anything can happen uh you know herb has been around he's done a great job over the years coaching those guys year after year uh, you know they've been able to get some good talent up there i think they have you know not if not if better, but in the same type of category of a running back and and, and uh, Jeff Mack, uh, you know that we just faced. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, if I'm with the Omaha beef such as I am, I mean, I have to be concerned about guys like that because of what happened last week. So I've just been emphasizing stopping the run, stopping the run this week. Sounds like a solid game plan. And before we talk about the actual matchup between you guys, you've been in the NFL and at all levels of football, so you're no stranger to rivalry games. What was your favorite rivalry in your career? Oh, it was the Miami Dolphin rivalry and the Jets. Jets, Miami Dolphin rivalry when we swept them about four years in a row. That was just so great. (laughs) (laughs) It's always great when you can uh, get a sweep under your belt as a player, right? Yeah, yeah, I've been swept before, so I know sure. <laughs> Good to be on the right side of it. Well, the last question I have for you is the obvious one. What do you guys need to do to come out with a W at the Slaughterhouse against Sioux City? Well, one of the number one things, we, we, we have to score points on offense. I mean, we got to have a play pretty much mistake-free on offense um, and uh, be able to get the ball to some of our best players. I mean, and you know, that's what we got to do in order to beat a team like Sioux City and you have to attack them, you know. Um, I mean, they're going to score points. They're a good team. So you got to expect that. But you have to outscore them. Uh, we got to play mistake-free ball, no interceptions, no turnovers. And we got to have a better special team. I mean, we didn't have a good special team. Our special team the first week was just awful. Uh, that's something that we gotta, we've got we been working on and we got to change and uh, being able to make those field goals when we need them because every point uh, matters in this game. And, and, and that's what we have to do. Um, just have to be strong. And we, I mean, we just have to beef it up in all phases of the game. I mean, it's going to be an intense game, so we have to be able to match the intensity of our opponents. And, you know, that's something that we have to do this week or it could be a long season. Yeah, it's definitely a win you want, a win that you kind of need with only 10 games in the season, but it's one that you especially want for your fans and for everybody involved. So I'm looking forward to a great matchup between you guys and the Bandits. And, Coach, I wish you the best of luck, and thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. Go Beef. And one more big thank you to Coaches Strobean and Jones for being my guest on Inside the CIF as we preview the game of the week for week four of the 2021 CIF season. We'll be back next week with an all-new Game of the Week preview. Who will it be? You'll just have to tune in and find out. So until then, I'm Richard Tiemann, and this is Inside the CIF. (laughs) 